everybody it's Josh with Walnut Ridge Family RV Sales today we're gonna go over the three types of hitches that are most common that we hook up so we'll have a travel trailer with weight distribution we'll show an Anderson ultimate uh, gooseneck connection uh, attached to a fifth wheel and then we'll show a traditional fifth wheel hitch okay let's get into it first thing we've done we've already got the truck backed into position we've already ha actually had it on here so I've got the weight off of it so we're ready to set it down on the ball now I've taken a quick measurement between the, the top of the wheel and the and the wheel well because we want to see how much it's going to squat to make sure we're set up properly when we get done once that initial setup's done you won't have to do that every time unless maybe you change the weight of the trailer by adding a bunch of stuff to the front of it or a lot of extra weight or a lot of extra weight in the bed of your truck that would be the only scenarios that you would probably have to maybe make an adjustment on the weight distribution but let's get started on just the basic hitching and, and unhitching of weight distribution so once we got it on here we're actually just going to lower it down onto the wall We just want to get this low enough to get the weight on there so that we can lock it in place. Now we're actually going to stop there and we're going to lift the weight of the truck up um, with the, using the power jack for our, uh, for our uh, support on this. So we're actually going to lift this up because what it's going to do is make it easier to move these bars into position. If we didn't lift that weight up, you may have to use your snap-up bar that comes with your system and take some extra force to get that on there. But if we lift the weight of the truck and the trailer up high enough, we should be able to line these bars up. Now I'm gonna go ahead and check this one while we're here. Yeah, we can slide right onto the bracket. We should be able to on this one. There we go. Now you have less, uh, less effort to be able to get it on. We'll put the pins on there. Now we're actually ready to just lower this down on the truck and, and put that weight and let these weight distribu distribution bars capture that weight and distribute it to the front of the vehicle and the back of the trailer. So we'll go ahead and lower this now. Okay, we have the weight completely on the distribution bars now. Um, now would be a good time to step back, visually check, and see that everything looks level. But more importantly, we're actually going to take that measurement and make sure that we are adjusted correctly um, so that you get the proper toe going down the road. Now, we went down to 9 inches. We started at 10 inches, so we moved 1 inch. Basically, what you're looking for is to only have a 50% to 100% um, change in in the the distance on your wheel well so we were at 10 inches we went down one inches the difference um, in there is only going to be one i've already pre-measured uh, without the weight distribution bars how far we went down and we only went down to about eight and a half so we got an extra half an inch that we've actually stopped it from going down and if you do the math on that we're around 75 percent it's exactly where we want to be for this setup so we know we have proper weight distribution the reason you do that if we have it too much and they have too much weight off the front of the trailer and the back of the truck it's, it's going to make for some weird pulling you're going to get a lot of uh, swaying behind you because you force that weight too far on the outsides so there's nothing to control it in here the sweat the sway part of this is going to struggle a little bit to keep up and uh, it's going to give you some chucking and bouncing if we didn't have enough of it where this is really squatted down now the sway control part of it's not going to work hardly at all because it's going to be forcing those bars it's going to be too much so this thing's just going to feel like it's all over the place behind you so it's important to get it in that spot again if you loaded the back of the truck up with a whole bunch of weight and it changed that measurement drastically you may have to adjust your brackets and you can see on the brackets where we've got set there's multiple holes so the simple thing to do is take a three quarter inch wrench we take these off obviously with the trailer unhooked um, then we can move these brackets up if we move the brackets up we are distributing more weight to the front of the vehicle and the rear of the coach and the way you can think of this in your mind is pretend your weight distribution bars are uh, handles to a wheelbarrow the higher you lift on those handles the more that weight goes to the front of the wheelbarrow so then you're distributing that weight forward easier to manage we're doing the same thing with these bars the lower they are the more that weight's coming back to the back end of the wheelbarrow so 
that's kind of how you look at that. So we move these bars up, it would actually take more weight. We probably wouldn't even squat a half an inch on this truck. If we move this down to the bottom hole, then we're gonna allow uh, a little bit more weight to be back here. These bars aren't gonna quite do what they're supposed to do and you're not gonna have an, you're gonna have an unpleasant ride trying to pull this thing, especially on the interstate or a windy day, which is really not gonna help you. So that's the importance of making sure it's set up properly and checking your adjustment. One other thing we'll go over, these, they're just clamped on the frame and they don't, you don't over tighten these. You don't actually want to bend the bars in where you have some gap in there. They need to be flat against the frame. So there is a possibility for them to sometimes move out of position, especially after towing for long periods of time or after several years of owning it, you've hooked up, you've used it. So you need to check periodically that these are in the correct measurement, which for weight, for the, for the equalizer that we have here, um, we're set up uh, 27 to 32 inches is where you need to be. Inside that range is ideal for these to work. As long as we have three inches past the bar here, which we do, we got uh, five and a half, because I've measured from the, the ball and we're 29 inches on both sides. You wanna make sure that both sides are even. If you can't get 29 inches, say if you get it on this side and you can't get it on that side, so you can only get to 30, we'll move this one back to the 30 spot so that they're even. If you can't get between 27 and 32, you may have to move something like the LP tanks maybe need to have their mount moved so that you can get it where they need to go. Very important, but periodically check. These things can move, slide around, get an angle. You just loosen up the bolts on the backside, get it back in position, snug those back down tight where everything's flush, and uh, then you'll be good to go for your next trip. Okay, one other thing we should go over is how to unhook. Um, and there's a procedure to do this as well. Once you get to the campsite, the tendency for some people is to just uh, snap the bars off, unlock it, lift it off the head. Can be dangerous. Now, equalizer bars are supposed to be fairly tight. This is an older system, it's a little worn out. We probably need to make adjustment to it. Uh, but you don't wanna do that for, for the, the possibility of it kicking out and maybe hitting you in the leg or something. It could injure you, those are solid pretty heavy steel bars. So the best thing to do when you get there is run your jack all the way down, take the weight off of it like we did when we uh, hitched it up. You're gonna actually lift the back end of the truck a little bit to take any of that weight off the bars. Then it's safe to pull them off the bracket. And then what I'll show you what'll happen is, um, then you won't be able to unhook it because you have weight against the wall. So let's go ahead and run this. See now we've kind of got the pressure off and now we're against the ball. We're raising the truck up off of it. If you remember from our measure, we only moved about an inch. So that's about all the further you're gonna have to go to get it up off of there. I'm gonna unpin this and then you can move the bar. So you can see we can still go over the top of it, no problem. If we still had weight on there, when you kick this off, that, that may drop down. It's gonna shift the trailer, probably gonna freak out a little bit, but that's what we'd do. Now, like I said, once you're in that position, you can't unlock this. This thing's too tight because we're against it. So you'd actually have to lower the truck back down, get the pressure off the ball, unlock it, raise it back up off the ball, then you can pull that. So that's pretty much it on uh, hitching and, and unhitching on the weight distribution system. Okay, now we're here at the uh, on a fifth wheel that we're going to hook up with the Anderson Ultimate Gooseneck Connection. The easy thing about these are we have a single point connection um, that has a, a coupler design and you don't have to be perfectly over it. So the difference in that in a traditional fifth wheel, you've got to get that lined up, come down in, lock in position. All we have to do on this, we we'll make sure the front end's raised high enough, obviously. Tailgate down. When we come in, that's a very important step to remember, uh, unless you like buying tailgates. Then we're going to back in underneath this till we get the ball pretty much centered underneath the best we can. If you can't get perfect, maybe you had to come in at a slight angle and you don't have any more room with your tailgate down to get all the way in the middle, we should be okay. This thing will come down and follow it because of the way the coupler is designed. Um, but just as far as the hitching procedure goes, Let's just show you how easy that is. Once we get it back underneath, all we're gonna do, you know what, I didn't check this first. Oh, that's heavy. We wanna make sure that, our, that we're unlocked, which we are. Okay. 
Now we're going to retract the jacks, lower this down on the ball. Okay, now we have the weight completely down on the ball. Um, I've stopped there because I want to show you, and I'll try and do this with this down a little bit so you can see better. Watch your shins. I am going to have to put it up. So this handle, the handle could be mounted different places. Sometimes we put them over here. Some people like to actually put it up in the bulkhead. Um, this one's on the back end of this. But all we do is there's a, there's arrows tells you which way to lock and unlock, which is actually kind of counter intuitive because it's uh, counterclockwise to, to lock and clockwise to unlock. So you would think tightening would be clockwise, but it's not. So anyway, as long as you got it unlocked and you can push that in, once you do that and you're going to snug that down. Now that can't come back out. We're locked on the ball. There's a pin that goes across the underside of it um, to lock that in place. We're good to go as far as actually hitching it on the ball. Obviously you take your breakaway cable and put somewhere on the hitch um, on a pin or something on the hitch plug your seven weight cord in and then for anderson's it depends on your local laws state laws indiana you have to have when it becomes a gooseneck connection like this you have to have safety chains so you can see we actually have some chains that are coiled up in there and there's hooks uh, that go on this coupler that's where you're going to hook your chains to so you would want to make sure you get those hooked up before you tow it so if you're from a different state and you're towing it, that may not be the law, but you might want to check if you're going to cross uh, multiple states going to your camping destination, you may want to check those laws because it might be required to have safety chains on there. Last thing you want is a headache like that and a, and a court appearance over, over something that's easily fixed. So you want, you want to check that out and make sure you have that um, hooked up if you need it. Now, once we got it on here, the next step, we can go ahead and close this actually. Hopefully, I got it close. Come down on me. Um, depending on the camper you have, a lot of them now have auto leveling, so you could go in and push some buttons for auto retract. It's just going to go ahead and run these legs the rest of the way up. This one's a little bit more old school. It's got uh, just front landing gear um, with an actual external switch here to use. So you're just going to, you would run these. Obviously, you're going to run this all the way up. You don't want to. You don't want to run them too far to where you start uh, ratcheting on the jacks. There's an impossibility you might blow a fuse or break a shear pin in the jack, and then you're going to have a hard time getting unhitched. So I'm not going to do this all the way because we're going to unhit unhitch it and, and uh, do something else. But uh, I just want to show you, once you got that weight off of there... Oh, I started lifting it, didn't I? You're supposed to tell me I'm hitting the button the wrong way. I wasn't even paying attention. retract these jacks all the way you would run these jacks all the way up so this will be easy enough i just got to get the weight off to show you the one final step which is just going to be running these feet up and locking into position obviously we wouldn't leave it this low while we're towing we would run those all the way up uh, but then that'll go into the next step of out when we get to the campground we need to unhitch so the first thing you would do get in your spot you got everything Looks like you're fairly level. So when you level it up, you won't have problems, especially if you have an auto level. Uh, any of the campers with auto level built in, you need to be within, I think, two degrees of level. So you don't have a very high tolerance at all. So if it's off on one side or the other, you run your auto level, it's gonna give you an error and the most common is that left front jack. And then if you're not familiar with it, it's kind of a little cumbersome to do the homing. Uh, process to reset that error code and get it out and then nobody wants to listen to a, a constant beep all the time on their jack so make sure at this point before you unhitch that you're you're fairly close that your auto level will work you need to put some boards or or some uh some stackers to, to, like what we sell here or links levelers underneath one side on the tires then you get that done okay so we're confident that we're going to be level we're going to drop these jacks down and lift that a little bit. Make sure that pin goes all the way through. You can see it on the other side. You want to make sure it's all the way through and didn't get snagged like 
slightly out where the pin's not protruding uh, on the other side here. Because then when we put pressure, that's going to bend these um, if we don't have that pin all the way through there. So make sure on both sides it's all the way through. That one's already good. We're fairly close on it. Another thing you'll want to keep in mind, if you're on a slope that maybe is going a lot downhill, you don't want to drop those too far to where you don't have enough jacks that the front end needs to come down, which is maybe maybe how you're sitting when you get off the truck, you need to actually lower it past uh, where it started when you first got there to get level. And then if you didn't, you're not going to have any jack to be able to get it down. You're going to put your truck back under it, jack it up, adjust those legs, redo it. So it can be a pain in the butt. We're good here because we're on fairly level surface. Um, so at this point, we would hit the extend button and run these jacks down. Um, what we would want to do is get them with an Anderson. Now this is going to work a lot like the weight distribution on a travel trailer does. We can't just go ahead and lift all this weight up, then we won't be able to pull that pin off the ball because we'd be putting pressure against it. We just want to get the legs down on the ground, a little bit of pressure. Um, we haven't lifted all the weight off the truck yet so that we can unlock the pin before we go ahead and do it. You don't want to, you don't really necessarily want to unlock that before we run the, the legs down. It's a very slim chance that something would happen that that would break off and the camper would fall, but why take the chance? So, got pressure on the leg. We're gonna come around here, we're gonna unlock that, and we're gonna pull that pin in the unlock position. Go ahead and snug that. That way, it won't move on you when you go to run this off. Now, all we gotta do is extend these legs. We're gonna go until we get it off of the ball and ready for the truck to pull out. Probably a good time. Go ahead and remember to get your tailgate down. You don't wanna pull out with the tailgate up. Especially nowadays with tailgates having cameras and sensors and lights and automatic tailgates, uh, probably costly to, to replace if you was to try and pull out with the tailgate up. Keep in mind now at this point is where we're unhooking at the campground or even at home. So we would actually take the safety chains off, go ahead and take the breakaway switch uh, cable off of whatever it's hooked to. Unplug the same way, coil that up out of the way. And we have to run this thing until we get clear of that ball. Now, Josh, would you say all in all that the Anderson's a little bit easier to do than a traditional fifth wheel hitch? Oh, by far. By far? By far. Yeah. Uh, it's a lot less hookup. It's actually, in my opinion, and I'm totally with you. Uh, a smoother ride, um, no chucking. Uh, it just it just feels completely different than a, a traditional fifth wheel hitch. And the the good part is, and we're going to go over this real quick before we pull this out of here. I think I got enough to clear. I'm going to jump up here in the back of the truck. Sure. Quick. So I want to show you something. So this coupler goes on the actual fifth wheel pin, and then these bolts that go through are actually going on, on the fifth wheel pin itself. Uh, you know, there's a there's that notch around it um, where like the jaws would lock in on a traditional fifth wheel. So that's essentially all we've done is these bolts have went through that notch. And so that's what's keeping that from being able to come off of there. And then on the bottom, there are four set screws that take an Allen key and there's a certain foot pound, I think 45 foot pound or something like that is what these need to be torqued to. It's not a whole lot, but they're just there to, they're kind of a little piercing screw and they're just there to keep that thing from rotating around on you. Um, but that's what I want to talk about. The good thing about this is, so we have this set up right now and it's in the back position for a long bed truck basically um, because we know we have enough clearance with the cab, um, whoever this uh, customer is, um, they can have it back. So that puts the weight basically over the axle like it's intended to be. However, if you had a short bed truck um, and, and you needed a little bit more uh, clearance back to be able to make your turn, this can be spun around the other way. So you get four inches more, you know, coming forward, uh, spinning this around. Um, so you can, you just loosen these up, you loosen these bolts just a little, just enough. You rotate that thing around facing the other way, tighten those up tighten those set screws and now we've just gained extra clearance behind it. The only thing you want to do on that is make sure if you have a 
like an extended kingpin or something or, or if it's got a weird setup on the bracket for the back that you have clearance for it to, to be able to go inside the truck and make the turns and, and against the tailgate. Because I have seen in a couple of instances where we couldn't have it in that position on the short bed. It just it put the hitch too far back and you're gonna get into your bed rails. Um, so we had to turn it the other way, but it worked out because the, the caps on that trailer was made that they had the clearance to be able to, to get around it. So you have options on how this can be hooked up. So it's really, uh, you know, pretty versatile for, for any truck out there. If you have a gooseneck already in it and you don't want to put rails and all that. If you don't have a gooseneck, um, they make a rail version that can go in fifth wheel rails uh, to be able to use this and convert it over to it. Uh, so you have options to get that done. But yeah, all in all, it's a pretty uh, solid hitch and an easy hookup. Uh, make, I mean, why not spend time camping and not messing with your hitch and all that? So, okay, I think that's all we have on hooking up the Anderson. Okay, now we're going to show how to hitch and unhitch just a, a traditional fifth wheel. So we have our Demco Recon back of our service truck here. I'm going to hook up to this Cougar. So I kind of have it pre set up a little bit, but you're going to get uh, lined up with the Cougar. I had a tailgate down already. Obviously, that's super important. You're not going to be able to back underneath here. Uh, but what I like to do is start with the the surface of the kingpin here about an inch or so lower than the surface uh, the top surface of the hitch so now when we back this underneath it it's going to kind of you can see they're beveled and it's going to kind of just follow it down we'll have a nice tight fit everything's going to go in where it should be if we had this too high to where the jaws can't come across this cutout in the kingpin and it may not latch properly um, and then it's going to make it a little bit difficult to hook up you could end up going too far back and, and tilting the head forward, which, you know, it depends on how much space you have back here, but you don't want to take a chance of maybe getting your tailgate into the door. So I always start with this about an inch lower than the top surface of the uh, fifth wheel hitch itself. And then we're, we have nothing behind us, uh, nothing in the way. We made sure we're safe. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to lock this out the latch out so now we're ready to drive underneath when we go underneath it's going to hit a trigger and this will automatically go in and then we'll double check to make sure that goes in all the way pin it and then we can move on to the legs and stuff so i'll go ahead and back this into the hitch so you can see that As our pin will go down through this we know that we've latched all the way but that's not the only thing that i'm going to make sure that this goes all in typically i would leave the truck running uh just to make sure i've got it in place in case i have to move it but for the video we didn't want to have too much noise so i went ahead and shut it off but i know this locked in tight you could see when i came back i wasn't lined up 100 perfect but that's okay because there's angles on the on the hitch itself uh that'll kind of it'll kind of maneuver around with you to get under it's another good reason why we have this about an inch lower is so you have that pressure uh, so that the hitch can move where it needs to go and, and uh, lock that fifth wheel in tight. So we've got a nice tight fit. I always step back behind it and take a look and make sure that the latch went across the jaw, which I don't know if you can see from there, but you can see right up in there, our bar is all the way across it. So we know we're, we're locked in tight there. Now is the time we could go ahead and close the tailgate Obviously, we would get our breakaway cable hooked to the hitch, pull our seven-way uh, pin out of here. We have a plug in the bed of this one. We plug it in there, or it can drape over and plug into the back of the truck. That's not going to hurt anything. But now it's just a matter of running the legs up. This one is convenient because we have a leveling system in here, so I can go in and uh, auto retract the rear. Um, oh, whoops! Auto retract all. And all I gotta do is hit enter, and it's gonna it's gonna go ahead and run these legs all the way up for us. Once the legs get all the way up, it's gonna be a lot like if you watch the Anderson hitch, same style of legs on that. Then we'll have to pull that pin and run those up. So we'll let this finish out, 
and then I'll show you from there where we go. Okay. Now, as long as we went ahead and hooked up our breakaway cable and our seven-way pin, close our door, make sure our tailgate's secure, um, go in and check our lights and everything on this, we're ready to, to tow. We're ready to haul this thing down the road. Um, this is a long bed truck, so we don't have to have, actually that is, yeah. Uh, so we don't have to have a slider hitch. Slider hitches be a little different if you have a manual one, there's some other, things to give you the clearance most of the time you don't need it on your standard towing it's usually when you're tight maneuvering um, but that's the the hitching process now we can pretend like we've just backed this into our spot we made sure everything is level enough for our auto level to work on this we're ready to drop this off the truck so the first thing that we would want to do drop these legs down which we're, we're going to be okay on this one we always want to make sure that that goes all the way in. You can see it didn't come all the way through just on its own when I first did it. So always make sure that that goes through all the way. But where we're at on level ground, we don't have to really worry about the leveling uh, so much. So we could leave this all the way down, but you would want to look at your terrain. If you're on a down slope, you may actually want to leave. You know, we would probably pull this. Maybe, maybe there, count the holes, make it even on the other side. You can see that pin didn't go all the way in again. I'd have to hit that. Um, and then run the legs down from there. That'd give us some play to move up or down if we needed to. This particular one, we don't really need to. We're not gonna actually do a full auto level. So we could go ahead and drop this to the ground, let it come up to the first hole. Make sure that goes all the way. Same on that one. And the reason I do that to make sure this pin goes all the way through, if that was to stick out here where it was, where it's not coming through the backside of this, now when I put the weight down, it could bend this pin and damage this snap pin assembly, which it's also going to make that unstable. could eventually damage the leg too. could even bend out the holes on the leg enough that it wouldn't retract up in there, and then you'd have a hard time. If you did do that, you wouldn't be able to track them up to take it down the road with a leg obviously you wouldn't pull it with a down low like this because you're going to hit all kinds of stuff cause some damage to the camper some people around you could injure some people so you always want to make sure that that goes all the way through and you see it on the other side okay now you don't want to go ahead and unlock the hitch just yet with having the legs just down from there it would be enough to catch it that it probably wouldn't hit on here but just in case maybe you didn't get your truck uh, all the way in park or or, or you forgot to do something, or maybe you're on enough of a slope and the wheel isn't chalked yet that this thing could roll. You don't want to take a chance of the kingpin hitting the tailgate or this hitting the top of the bed. So I always run these legs down, get pressure on it first. So this one, all we got to do is hold this front button. So you can see we're kind of taking the, the weight off the trailer. Since we're going to unhitch this, we can go ahead and, and put most of the weight on there. And you probably couldn't see it when I did it. I'm gonna lower this back down and show you real quick here. Okay, now if we focus on the hitch in between, what you're gonna watch for when I'm lifting this up, you'll see, I'll just get some separation. You'll see daylight in between them. And that's what I'm looking for when I run these up. So you can see now I've got it separated from the hitch. The weight of the trailer is actually on the legs. That's what I was talking about. You wouldn't want to hook up that way because you may not necessarily get lined up correctly, but when you're unhooking, you're okay to get that daylight in there. And then now we would go ahead and get this pin out. Actually, before I do that, done the tailgate just in case something catastrophic goes wrong. We don't want to have the tailgate in the way. I don't think there's going to be anything. Now we just pull this out to unlock it. But I want to stress something here before I do that. Like I can pull this, it's going to be easy. I can tell that's going to come out easy. Sometimes you go to pull on this and you, you, you know, it kind of takes everything you have. You can't get this to pull out. What's going on sometimes there, if we're on an upslope and the trailer kingpin is sitting back against this bar on the hitch, it's putting all that pressure on and then this is very difficult to pull out. So you may need either somebody to help you put a chalk behind the wheel of the camper 
back the truck up uh, into it just a little bit so you can get that pressure off set the parking brake on the truck so that way it doesn't roll forward when you put it in park um, but it, whatever you got to do to get the, the the pressure off of this bar that's going to cross on the kingpin but this one i know we're on pretty level ground it's going to come right out I'm just going to pull that out and lock it in place also sometimes kingpins get worn out these things are bouncing getting pulled down the road uh, it is just metal on metal you have a loop plate in there for the turning and stuff but you know over time that that metal can fatigue there we go good example didn't stay locked in place which could be a problem getting unhooked now i've got it locked it probably won't do that again but if it if you're pulling and you can't get that lock that's why they put this secondary hole so you can get that pin and stick in there to keep this out if you don't have somebody maybe that can help you hold this handle so uh, we run into that sometimes with people trying to unhook you just can't pull it out of there because this just keeps going back in on you it's not supposed to so pull that out we've unplugged our seven way off the back of the truck we've taken our i'm gonna have to pin this thing <laughs> we've taken our uh breakaway cable off nothing is attached now except for the trailer sitting here inside the the hitch and we're ready to pull this thing out so without taking a chance of pulling this out i must have enough pressure against it we'll just stick that in now it's not going to be able to go in so we ought to be able to pull the trailer out so i'll go ahead and pull the trailer out Okay, now you can see we're unhooked. Get myself plenty. Let's go ahead and get my tailgate up and go park the truck. Begin our auto leveling process on the trailer and get ready for a fun weekend of camping.